I have Cedric Clyburn, uh, an OpenShift de developer advocate intern, presenting on Cloud Native CI CD in under 15 minutes. Take it away, Cedric. Thank you so much. And um, it is true uh, within 15 minutes or your money back, that's 100% guarantee uh, on my part. So <laughs> we'll go ahead and get started here. But um, I just want to say thank you all for being here. My name is Cedric Clyburn. I'm an OpenShift developer advocate. And um, I'm here to kind of tell you and, and give you a little bit of a hands-on intro to cloud native CI CD working with OpenShift pipelines. And so how we're going to structure this is we'll start with a brief overview of CI CD and more specifically what CI CD is. And then we're going to introduce some OpenShift pipeline concepts. And then we'll actually be making a real world pipeline right here in under 15 minutes guaranteed. So if you're like me, probably eight to 10 months ago, I, a little bit, bit, a little bit of background, I'm a student, um, but I'm also getting some experience. It's my second uh, summer interning at Red Hat. I love it. I love the people. It's a great place. Um, but you're probably wondering, you know, if you were me, what the heck is CICD? So I've gone ahead to pull up the definition from the Red Hat website, and I believe it really encapsulates the process of CICD. So it's introducing ongoing automation, you know, specifically automation and continuous monitoring throughout the life cycle of apps from integration and testing phases to delivery and deployment, the CI part and the CD part. And if we think about it, CI CD has a few different meanings. You know, it's split up in half. The CI is continuous integration, which is this automated process for developers like us. Think of, you know, the building, the testing, the merging process and a GitHub repo that we're used to. I was, you know, 25 minutes ago just doing this on Jenkins for um, some of my Java projects I'm working on, um, which can, you know, solve issues of having too many branches in an app uh, in development at once that could possibly, you know, conflict with each other, things like unit tests, all that. The latter part, though, is CD, which refers to continuous delivery or deployment, kind of each get used interchangeably. But what's important to know is this kind of helps illustrate how much automation is happening. So continuous delivery means the devs changes to an apps are automatically, you know, bug tested, uploaded to a repo, whereas continuous deployment refers to kind of getting that in production uh, much faster. So uh, whereas, you know, people like you and me can access it right after that. So it's that next step and builds upon the benefits of continuous delivery right here in the middle. But let's get to the fun part of what the cloud native version of CICD is. So it essentially refers to a few different aspects. Firstly, on the left here, containers. It's got to support apps that run on containers orchestrated by Kubernetes, or in our case, OpenShift. Secondly, it's got to be serverless, meaning it can run and scale on demand without you know, needing a central engine to maintain that. And then finally, up here on the right, it's built with DevOps practices in mind, meaning teams can have their own delivery pipelines alongside the apps they build without the dependency on other teams having to wait, things like that. So our CI CD should be able to perform all of this with this in mind. And you already know, but there's plenty of options for your projects to choose from. For example, Jenkins we use here at NC State University. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with this guy, um, but you know, at the end, he normally helps me out. But <laughs> the one we'll be like, took, taking a look at today is called Tekton. So it's a powerful and uh, flexible open source framework for creating cloud native CI CD systems been around for a minute, um, super, super flexible, super easy to use, integrates straight into Kubernetes and allows you to build, test and deploy across cloud providers and on-premise systems. And so OpenShift pipelines that we'll be talking about today is this native integration of Tekton into OpenShift and introduces a set of tools that are compostable, declarative, reproducible and cloud native to make building pipelines as easy as can be. So let's quickly go through the building blocks that Tekton provides also known as OpenShift pipeline building blocks. And see, these are the main concepts that make up OpenShift pipelines. So steps, tasks, and pipelines, you know, they already make up the bulk of our CD system. Firstly, we've got a step, which is a single unit, a single operation that we perform on our code. Say, for example, you know, the unit test on your Python code, which Tekton can perform inside of a container, which you provide. So the one that we've got on the top right, that little screenshot, that's building our app with Maven and the bottom right is going to parse our Python code. So super simple, super basic. You can build upon these. And then secondly, we've got a task. So a task is a collection of steps that we just mentioned. So one, two, three, four, five, however many you want from unit tests to building apps, all those types of things. Tekton runs these tasks in sequence inside of a Kubernetes pod, which in turn can run independent of pipelines. 
And then finally, the most important part, we've got the pipeline, which as we talked about before, is a collection of tasks that can run in a variety of ways with different conditions that specify when to start the task and when to run the task in a variety of ways. So these are reusable across projects, with it, which is definitely my favorite part. So it saves you and me valuable time that we could be spending on pretty much anything else. So we, we talk about this reusability. So this works with these input and output resources. So everything from Git repos to PRs to images, all sorts of things um, you can use a pipeline with to be essentially flexible and reusable. So whether you're working on project A, project B, project C, um, it, it can all be run with the same pipeline. So I think that's super awesome. It definitely saves me a lot of time. Uh, and then lastly, we've got task runs and pipeline runs. So these simply define the execution of a pipeline. And I'm going to show you this a little bit later in this hands-on demo that we're going to run. But this specifies exactly what to be uh, put into the pipeline. So for our Git repository, uh, anything like that, that is going to be the specific. So the pipeline run and the task run are kind of going to tell the pipeline what specifically to do. So here we can see it all come together. So feel free to take a screenshot and check it out later because these pipelines are honestly a little bit fascinating. Um, but let's get to the fun part of actually working with OpenShift pipelines. I promise you guys a demo. We're going to do that today. So as mentioned before, pipelines is the native integration of Tekton onto the OpenShift platform. And it offers all of these awesome developer uh, features from being Kubernetes native, serverless, running pipelines in isolated containers, uh, and even going as far to having uh, a Visual Studio Code extension that you can install. So a lot of different features that they offer. Um, but to install it, you can simply go to your cluster and search it on the operators hub, just the pipelines operator. And it's super easy to use. There's also a web interface uh, for people who are more you know, visual learners. But for me, I'll be running the Tekton CLI. So TKN is what we're gonna be using for the rest of this demo to show you how dang easy it is to make your own pipeline. So if you'd like to follow along with this demo and you don't already have an OpenShift cluster ready, uh, I've got you because we've got a hands-on lab that me and my team at Red Hat actually work on. So it's over at learn.openshift.com, which provides a set of Katacoda scenarios that are completely browser-based. Like you don't even have to have anything ready that will allow you to follow along and learn not just OpenShift pipelines, but we're talking, you know, Quarkus, serverless AI, and a whole bunch more demos using OpenShift. So let's go ahead and hop into there. I'm going to stop sharing and reshare so I can switch tabs. Um, but that's where we're going to be continuing. So it's learn.openshift.com slash middleware slash pipelines if you want to follow along with this demo. So give me two seconds here and I'm going to go <laughs> hop in. I do like the pun. I do like the pun. Um, but yeah, give me two seconds here and I'm going to go and share my screen uh, from the learn.openshift.com side. So let's see. That should be sharing right now. So once you're in this side of um, of the our you know our learn.openshift.com site, um, you'll you'll go in and you can get a brief outline of what you're going to be doing through this workshop. Uh, remember, you don't even have to have anything installed. These are completely free. Um, we've got a lot a lot more that I work on as well, but this is one that I've contributed to in the past year. Um, so. The first step to working, of course, with OpenShift pipelines is installing the operator. So I've gone ahead and done this. It takes a you know a couple seconds. Um, you can either do it going from, of course, the web console as we talked before, going to Operators Hub and installing through there, or simply with a YAML file applying that to the Kubernetes uh, cluster, and then you can verify the installation with this quick script that'll run every five seconds to make sure you've installed it. So once you've installed it. Great, congratulations. Let me go ahead and clear this real quick. Let's see. A little bit buggy. Um, but <laughs> what we'll go ahead and do from this point on is create a new project. Actually, I might need to refresh the page. I think sharing on Hopin can be a little, a little bit tricky on Chrome. So give me like two seconds here. I should still be able to see it. So yeah, as I mentioned before, you've got the outline brief right here and we'll go ahead and reinstall this real quick, but give us two seconds. Sweet, cool. So it configures it for you. There we go, we can type. All right, cool. We'll log back into the cluster 
um, and go ahead and install the operator uh, through this super easy OpenShift object. And then we'll go ahead and verify the installation. And so next step, of course, is going to be super easy, uh, creating our Kubernetes project uh, or our OpenShift project. Um, and you can either do this through the console here or through the terminal here, or go to the web console right up here, which will bring you to a new page where you have your own personalized um, web console that you can use for up to 60 minutes, uh, completely free. Again, you don't have to pay for any of this, which is super cool. Don't tell anybody. Um, but we'll go ahead and create this once the operator is finished installing. But let's take a look here at our first task, which I think is super awesome to see this live. Um, so a task uh, is, as we mentioned before, a series of steps that run in a desired order, doing everything from, you know, a unit test to building something. Uh, and the, we've got pretty much the most basic task that you can see right here, simply, you know, echoing he hello world to the console. So let me create this project real quick. And let's go ahead and work with this uh, sample task. So we've got this here and it's already on this file system in the directory task slash hello.yaml. It's already there. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of data about it. The name is hello for our task. Uh, the step is called say hello, just literally running a UBI image and now going hello world to the console. So all we have to do is use the command OC apply, apply that, and then we can use the command TKN task start to really just go ahead and start this and see it in our console. So it's as easy, it's as, easy as that um, to really get started using these different tasks. Um, we'll give it a second here and it's going to go ahead and you know, spin up this UBI image and do this, um, do this, do this command to the console. And we should see it here in a couple seconds. It's going to look a little bit like this. So we'll wait for this task run. As, as I said before, task run kind of gives you the specifics on, uh, on configuring these different tasks and pipeline and stuff like that. So we just ran our task right here and it gave us the output of hello world. So super cool to be able to see that live. Um, Working with task resource definitions can kind of allow us to make custom pipelines um, and, and a whole lot more. So um, this is a great example of a task that has a whole bunch of different parameters. Um, so things from a manifest directory to the different steps of applying an image. Here you can see uh, the specific image that we have, uh, an origin CLI. And then also arguments like we had before, where it was super easy, you know, we were saying echo hello world. And we saw that right there with through the say hello uh, step. Well, we're going to be doing this um, just a little bit, a little bit more with applying custom manifest to kind of build our application when we start this pipeline. So we'll go ahead and apply these three tasks, um, which I'd love to get into more detail with, um, but we got to run through this real fast. I don't want to take up you guys' time too much. Um, but we've applied these three different uh, tasks right here um, from a persistent volume claim to updating deployment and manifest. And if we run TK and task LS, this is going to show us what kind of task that we have active. So the hello task from before, we can see that that we applied it a minute ago and then apply manifest and update deployment. So this one is the apply manifest. We can see that it's been here now. And so now we can see it and let's get to the final part of actually creating a pipeline. So a pipeline is, uh, you know, a collection of these different tasks that we can, you know, use different parameters to start, to stop, things like that. The task that we're actually running uh, is combining a API and a UI uh, for a voting application and pushing that out using the two different tasks that we had before, apply manifest, update deployment, to actually uh, spin up a pod, actually two pods that'll be live on our, uh, our OpenShift deployment. Um, and be publicly accessible to the web. So if you keep on following this along, within 10 minutes, um, you'll be able to actually see this live. But let's just take a quick look before we end up at this pipeline and what things are gonna really look like when you're working with uh, OpenShift pipelines. So what this is made of, you've got the same you know, metadata as before. Our build and deploy pipeline is right here. A bunch of different parameters and specifications here. So as I talked before, these are completely reusable. Um, so you're not going to see any specifics when you're working with these pipelines. So deployment name is going to be custom. Get URL. Of course, there's no specific URL that we're working with, but we know it's a string. Um, and then actually you get down here and you can actually see all the commands that are going to be run. You can see everything from 
uh, a builder, yeah, working with builder down here um, to uh, creating a workspace um, and using the apply manifest task before. So uh, there's a bunch of different steps. And the last part here is actually using a pipeline start and triggering this pipeline with a bunch of different custom parameters from our URL to our image to our registry, and then actually deploying that live to a cluster, which you can do uh, after this after this presentation. Uh, and I highly encourage you to, to do so because it's a great learning experience and you can continue on to verify the deployment and actually have this live. So unfortunately, I don't have enough time today to be able to do that, but I do have enough time today to be able to thank you for being here. Um, I appreciate your time and I hope you learned something today about uh, cloud native CI and CD, how to get started, how to do tasks, how to work with pipelines. And uh, once again, I appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Cedric Clyburn. Feel free to reach out. I just created a Twitter. Um, you know, I might be in college, but I'm just not too tech, <laughs> tech savvy with Twitter. So feel free to follow me. Uh, I follow back, um, see some of my other presentations. I've worked with, um, you know, OpenShift pipelines a lot, but other things like Odo. Odo is a favorite of mine and getting started with work uh, with OpenShift. Um, so I have different presentations I've done on that. Um, but again, thank you so much for being here. My name is Cedric Clyburn and uh, enjoy the rest of your day at DEF CON. Woo -woo. <laughs> um, I'm happy to stay on here and answer any questions if y'all have any. Yes, good. Okay, I was worried you'd just jump off before I asked you. Um, Can't do that. <laughs> so, not many questions yet. I dropped one in earlier. Um, I don't know if this is a preview or not, but uh, here you go. So um, can you comment at all on something like Argo workflows versus tech on pipelines? Um, how do you see them fitting together in like grand scheme of things? Right there. Yeah, wait, what was your last question? How do you see oh, them? Like, how do you see them fitting together in a system? If they fit in at all, do they like compete against each other? Or, like, um... So, yeah, I've worked a little bit on our workshops that we have with Argo. Um, and I, I honestly think they're great complementary tools. So I've personally, I've never used both of them at the same time. I, I feel like they have great applications for, for, for different purposes. If I want to be a little bit more nitty gritty and see the specifics of what I'm trying to run and all the steps and everything, I would definitely go with Argo. OpenShift Pipelines is you know more if you're you know if you like to be a cli type person if you like working with you know yaml files right in the terminal um i actually was introduced to openshift pipelines first in my you know ci cd journey so i you know that's that's what i'm more familiar with but i think they both have their you know distinct advantages and disadvantages but i'm a big openshift pipelines guy but you know <laughs> all love <laughs> exactly right we're all just trying to solve problems yeah exactly exactly and i feel argo cd is you know very if you if you want more specifics um but pipelines is very native to the whole openshift ecosystem so it's literally built in like if you know they've got an entire web console uh within the openshift uh console so it's it's easier to work with if you're a visual person and you just want the simple steps Mm -hmm. um, cool. Hi, if you're still here. Um, so normally that whole presentation takes an hour. Uh, <laughs> I was running through it, but it takes 50 minutes to an hour. Um, so half an hour is the presentation, half an hour is the lab. Um, but I had to condense it um, to 15 minutes, actually 10 minutes beforehand, but they gave me a little bit more, more time, which I appreciate. So. Um, I tried to condense all the information, but there's definitely more out there. And if you search YouTube, um, I've got a whole presentation and my team has the full hour talk about using OpenShift pipelines um, and a great introduction as well. So yeah, good question. Do, do you have any links you can drop in chat for our audience right now? Yeah, absolutely. I can bring it up. Um, it's not me specifically, but it's um, Brian from our team, um, which I love and adore. So you'll, he's, a, he's a great talker. So I'll go ahead and throw that in there if you're still here. Like two seconds. <laughs> yeah, bro, thank you so much. I do appreciate it.
Um, yeah, I mean, outside of that, it doesn't seem like we're getting too many questions, so I won't keep you for too long. I know you have assignments.